action. Clap the words. Is it yes, what you need? Yes. She's off. Oh, sorry. Get I me forgot. home. Get me home. I forgot this bit. I thought it was the feet business. He did tell you about the feet. <laughs> go, go. Hello. Can you see me? Can you see me knitting? I don't know if you can or not. Yes, I can see you knitting. Oh. So I just put it over the needle like that and you're twisting against each other, aren't you, like that? Did you want me to do that? No, how warm are you? I'm OK. Why? I, I was hoping you might be too Ooh. warm. Oh, I think I undid it. <laughs> I was twisting it the wrong way oh, right. sort of like a, a big... No, I won't say sausage, that's the wrong word. So you've not got all that cable flopping around everywhere. And I found if I decrease down to two stitches... Welcome everybody to the Bakery Bears video show featuring the grand finale of my favourite blanket. Oh my goodness. Now I think it is more than fair to say that at the start of this year Kay took on probably her greatest challenge yet, certainly in the knitting world, because to think that you were going to create... Yes. 12 exclusive colourways. 24, I mean, 24, thank you. 24 colourways. Of course, colorways. of course. 24 exclusive colourways. To then accompany 12 parts yeah. to a brand new design was yeah. just insane. For everyone. What were you thinking? What was I thinking? Now, we've had 11 absolutely <laughs> wonderful episodes and it's been just so great, hasn't it, to also experience the seasons as the, the series has, yeah. has progressed. And today, it, it's sort of shocking to think that the end oh, has come. I've finished it. <laughs> yes. Now, I think it would also be more than fair to say that you were actually quite pleased when you did finish it. Yeah, I was. It feels a bit it's weird. It's like any big project, I suppose. It's like any big project, yeah. I've been knitting it all year, you know. That's ten months, isn't it, of, of knitting work. And... Yeah, it feels a bit weird that I don't have to knit it anymore. Saying that, I do have a second one on the go, which I'm not thinking about right now. But And that yeah. third one that you planned? No, no. <laughs> he jests. No, no. No, no. <laughs> Definitely um, not. So I'm, I was really pleased, yeah, that it... Not in, a, not in a, like, oh, thank goodness way, you know, not in that sort of way. It's just like really pleased. It's like when you finish a jumper or... Yeah, absolutely. You're just pleased to get to the end of the project and to have the finished thing and, it, you know, for it to have gone as well as it's, it's gone. So, yeah, I'm really happy that it's finished and you'll be seeing that. What a later show today. On. What a month this has been for us, personally, because mm. can you believe that our little daughter, Bryony, is now an adult? She's yeah. turned 18. She did. Bryony was 18 just a little while ago. Which, Insane. Yeah, it's a weird feeling. and all, all your parents out there will have no doubt gone through this if you've got older children. And it's a very strange feeling to not be the parent to a child technically anymore. You know, there's no switch that's flicked, is there, as soon as they're 18? It was in my head. They're eight. <laughs> It was, you know, that was in what it was days. like for me, you know. I, I had a job. I was working. I started my job when I was 18. And the world's so different, isn't it, now? It's like the bird pushing its chicks out yeah, of the nest. You'll yeah. either fly or you won't. Yeah, yeah. And she was very pleased in the end. I mean, she was resistant, I think, for quite some time to reaching 18. She didn't like the thought of being technically an adult. But she was very happy when it came around, I think. Came, not to quote... Geniuses, but resistance is futile. There's nothing you can do about it. It's the passing of time, isn't it? We've also reached the stage where we can't dance around like an idiot before seven o'clock to Stevie Wonder. Yeah, I've injured, I sort of injured myself. So Kay and I have been together many, many, <laughs> many years. And I have never before seen her move the way she was the other morning it wasn't even seven o'clock you know and, no, it and wasn't. i just wanted to do something fun for bryony and she succeeded no you know i mean she was laughing her head off bryony was laughing her head off so i decided to put on stevie wonder happy birthday and just suddenly decided to dance around the living room like an absolute maniac i mean literally 
you know, and it was like, I suppose it's like doing an aerobics class before you warm up. Yes. I just, you know, and I did it for quite some time. Dan just caught the very end of my insanity. And then very shortly afterwards, I I, I realised that I'd strained some muscles. Something's twisted. (laughs) Oh dear. <laughs> Strain some muscles around my sort of top of my leg, around my hip area, Oops. and I could barely walk. <laughs> it's getting better. So we are managing you through your strain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, you know, there well, are there I'm are really... many positives and negatives to being all ages, I think. Yeah. You know, being young, there's loads of positive and negatives, but I have to say, I'm very happy and content. No, I'm uh, not. But you know. Each to their own. Oh, stop it. I'd rather be 10 years younger than I am. No, I'm not really enjoying being over 50, I'll be honest. But again, there's nothing you can do about it, is there? You've just got to kind of get on with it. But as, Resistance as, is futile. Yeah, I was saying to you this morning, I guess you've just got to realise that you're not 20 anymore and you can't sort of do these mad, random things. You um, can still do you know, crazy if, things. You well, just need to plan yeah, it. Yeah, if, if, if it had been later in the day, you know, and yeah. I'd been up and about and moving around had and I'd had my walk, walk. Yes. I probably would have been fine. You but would. I was literally from, like, a city a to start, start. Yeah. Yes. I was just crazily dancing around the living room. And, yes, as it's the Look, first... Look, it of, made Bryony laugh and gave yes. you something to remember, didn't it? Definitely, me too. 18. As it's the 1st of November, we've also reached that moment in time which we will not dwell on because I've been banned to talking about it too much. And that is, of course, the changing of the clocks. There's way too many wonderful projects on and off our needles today to waste our time moaning about time. (laughs) So without further ado, resistance is futile because, yes, it is time for me to ask Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Well, who said that? Resistance in his future. The Borg. Oh, the Borg. <laughs> yes, the who are, Borg. Who secretly love to knit. Do they? I don't know, do but think I think the that Borg would be cool. Knit? That's what they do. I don't know, maybe they do. They, they have they a knitting really, collection. They don't wear clothes, do, do they, the Borg? It's they like do a under their suits. Of, it's like a sort of metallic y, costumey thing. That they have a, a woolen all in one bodysuit underneath. They do? I know that, definitely. Maybe they knit for the Queen Borg? They do, they do. Knitter, you know, yes. nice cosy scarves. It's a knitting collective, Kay. Maybe it is. What's in that lovely bag? Okay, so what is in my project bag? Right, well, this you haven't seen before, and it's almost finished. It's ginormous. It is. Because I started this, what will be 14 days ago now, I think. I can't quite work it out. And I purchased a Halloween advent, let's say, calendar. I mean, what do you say when it's a Halloween? It's not advent calendar. No. It's a halloween calendar, let's yeah. say that. There should be another name. I know. I was thinking about that this morning. Could you take part of Halloween and add advent? Could you ship them together You need to somehow? be careful here. Could because it be... No, yeah, no, I, don't. I'm thinking stop. of it in my head. Just stop. No, I might say an inappropriate word. Just forget all of it. Okay. Because there's exciting things coming in 2024, and we shall say nothing oh. more than that. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. Brain just exploding. Talking of silly words. Exceptionalness. Silly words. Is just around yes. the corner. Right. So, anyway, I purchased a halloween calendar. Excellent. From Beehive Yarns this year, and it contained 13 20 gram minis, and it was themed on the TV series Wednesday. So I, I got it because Bryony loves that series, she loves Wednesday, she thinks it's iconic. I thought, yeah, I'm going to get that, and with no real sort of ideas on what I was going to do with it. And it was only sort of last minute because I started opening this on, I think it was the 19th of October. I opened it so that I would open the last one on Halloween. And it might have been on the 16th or 17th or something. I thought about what I was going to do with it. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to knit Bryony another scarf. She loves scarves. She's got three that I've knitted her. And she's wearing one today to school, actually. She really loves them. I thought, this is a great idea. So I had a look at the past scarves that I'd knitted for her and I always knit the scarves in the round because then it makes it double thickness, nice and easy. Well, at first I didn't know whether I'd have enough yarn in the 13 minis. So I found one of the other scarves. I couldn't remember how much I cast on because I didn't make a note, but I sort of figured it out. I just counted the stitches around. It was slightly different on each of the three scarves. 
But then I looked at the width because what happens with a scarf that you knit like this is it tends to stretch out lengthwise, which makes it sort of narrower. So I had a look at that and I thought, right, I'll add a few more stitches. And I, I worked out that I could knit a scarf if I just added a little contrast stripe in between. And what I'm doing is I'm doubling the mini. So the 20 gram minis, so I'm doubling them. So I'm only knitting just over 10 grams a day. And I've kept up with it every single day. And do you know what? It's been fabulous. I've absolutely loved it. I fell behind just yesterday. So I'm on the last mini, but I've essentially almost finished it. Oh, you can see the colors. So this is where I'm up to this one is the last colour here that I'm knitting, this sort of really dark purple. And then it runs through purple. So this is this is number 13, I'm going backwards. So it goes sort of dark to light through purples. And then the other way, it goes darker, sort of into bluish purples, working darker and darker until we reach what was essentially a very blackish blue right down here so this was day one right down at the bottom working my way up all the way through isn't it lovely it really is and then the contrast stripe that you can see fortuitously you know I didn't know what this would look like but I had a discussion with Bryony about what colours she thought it might be she was a genius wasn't she she was a genius she sort of said well Wednesday it's going to be sort of blacks blues and purples that's exactly what it was <laughs> so I thought right I need a contrast colour to just add in these little stripes to make sure that I get the length that I need and I remembered can, you put you might remember as well can you remember I dyed up some yarn when I was making Bryony's reading shawl a yellow color I didn't like it so I over dyed it with a blue and I'd got loads of that and at the minute I don't intend making another reading shawl I changed my mind on that color and did something else with Bryony's so I had all of this yarn and it was a really lovely blue it's this one here so I thought I'm going to use that for the contrast and you don't, I haven't used a lot. This was two 50 gram skeins. I don't even know, I might have only used 20 or 30 grams for that contrast stripe, but it worked out perfectly. The colors were just perfect. So it got, when it was down here, I was like, gosh, my contrast color is sort of quite similar now to the mini, but actually it was totally fine. And I've just loved it. And I'm knitting it in the round, you can see. It's just in the round on a 16 inch circular and within the the kit within the Halloween calendar one of the things I got was this little progress keeper and I love it it's one of those that's like a bauble full of stars but they're deep purple and it comes on it's it's not really a standard lobster claw it's like a big round one that hinges open like that you, you might have had progress keepers like this but I haven't had one of these before and it's brilliant I love it it's really easy to move and I'm using this to count my rows because what I figured out once I'd done the first one way back here I could see how many rounds I was getting out of a 20 gram mini I made a note of how many that was and then I just could count my rows because I used pretty much all of the mini I might have only had you know this much left of the mini but I never ran out I've done the same number of rows rounds all the way through and I, I haven't run out of yarn so my you know the first of all the minis were exactly the same weight so that's good but then also my gauge must have stayed consistent through the whole thing which again is really good I'm just on the last one so here's that last color really pretty and when I finished this color what I will do, because when I cast on down here, I just cast on, so it's open at the bottom, but I'll, I just normally just sew that together. It's not a problem. I know that I could effectively do a provisional cast on and then Kitchener. I couldn't be bothered. I'm not a massive fan of doing a provisional cast on. I just find it a bit of a faff and it, it would take me five minutes just to seam this shut. That's what I normally do. And then I will probably Kitchener the top here. I think that's what I would you know usually do 
and then I will add some kind of tasselage or something fancy on the edges. I normally do like a fringe or a tassel and I can use my contrast colour for the fringe so that will like tie it all in and it's a really good length just swung around my neck like that it goes all the way down to my hip I suppose and it's still got a little bit more to go but I thought it looked quite preppy do you know with the stripes it looked yeah, a bit kind of sort of university-ish which is quite nice and Bryony generally just wears it round her neck like this once it kind of stretches out a bit because they all do they stretch lengthwise she then once it's a bit longer she just sort of um, twirl it around if it's a bit long so knitting this because I enjoyed it so much and you know you're only knitting 10 grams in the mini and then a little tiny bit in the contrast I've kept up every single day even though I've been doing my favorite blanket and getting that finished plus everything else I've still managed to keep up and I think what I've loved about it is that normally when you buy advent, you know, advent calendars, yarny advent calendars, I end up not using them through December because you just get so busy, don't you? And I don't never know what to do. And then sometimes you might use them, but you only use a little bit of them and then you've got all this yarn left. But with this, I was using the entire mini every day and it was gone and done. And I've knitted it into something. And it just made me think I'm really going to have a ponder about advent this year because i've got two advent calendars yarn advent calendars that she can remember no i'm sure i've only got two so i was thinking about what i could do something similar because i know that i can knit through 10 grams so i can double it and knit through that 10 grams comfortably every day so i'm just having a ponder as to maybe something i could do but also knitting this gave me some inspiration for something that will be appearing next year so I'm not saying any more about that at the moment, but it just suddenly popped into my head that it's just perfect. I've loved it. I'm still loving it. And I'm looking forward to getting this finished. And it seems so bizarre that I've got something quite, you know, quite long finished so quick. It's just brilliant. It's just brilliant. <laughs> it's a revelation really to me, to real for me to realise that I can produce something in such a pleasant way that I've really enjoyed. I've used all of this calendar, so it's not, you know, going back into my stash. I've used it, and it's relevant to the time that I've been knitting it as well. You know, I've been knitting it through October into Halloween, through Bryony's birthday as well, and she loves all of the halloween -y sort of vibes. So this will be finished for next time, and I can show you the, the finished thing, but it's been really lovely, and I really... You know, Beehive Yarns, I think I, my one of my advent calendars is also from Beehive Yarns from Beth and it's patisserie themed, I believe. But her yarns are lovely. This calendar came, it was like in a lovely cardboard box, but the lining of the box was black and there was black sort of um, shredded paper in there. The, there was a lovely printed card with all the names of the colourways on it and that had a black background and it was very, very spooky and Halloween. It was brilliant. So I'd really recommend her yarn. And just a reminder, I don't know whether I should be... I was sat here thinking, do I need to put something up at the bottom of the screen? And then I just thought, well, no, that's just going to be sad. And Well, not sad, but like a bit... If you recall, two or three episodes ago, we mentioned that we buy everything that we speak about. Yes. So Kay is saying that Beehive Yarns and Beth are superb because she is. Yeah, well, because I've bought... <laughs> Not because anything has been sent to us. No, 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 no. You know, I, I bought... This was purchased. I, the advent yeah, calendar was purchased. Yeah, I bought this. I bought the advent calendar. Everything I've bought yarn from, from Beth before. So, yeah, and it's lovely, you know, and it, I've tangled up my... Do you know what? I, now. I do think it's sad that we've got ourselves into a position where we don't trust. And I don't blame anyone because I'm exactly like you. Because anywhere you look, do you know what I mean? Anywhere you look, when someone says something positive, yeah, in your mind I, you're thinking, is, is there product placement going on? Yeah, I mean, I, I do see, and I think it's just because it's become more in the focus. I, I see it quite a lot on YouTube channels that I watch where 
things like this have come into it you know sponsored videos and I'll be honest when it reaches the sponsored bit I always skip it because you know partly because I might not be interested in whatever the product is but also it's giving an opinion for something that's been given to them so I think there is going to naturally be a bit of bias there even if you don't think you're being you know leaning towards being positive about it oh, well i'm virtually so i just always skip through it and that's fine i've not got an issue with these things you know people can run their channels however they want to run of their course. channels and it's you know we totally get up to them we get emails all the time and on those emails what they ask for is they ask to see what you're going to say about them before it goes into your show yes they do so and you're I've, not I've, telling me that they would go oh yeah no, fine. I've, I've seen broadcast <laughs> i've seen people say that because it's a sponsored ad you know they've got to let the sponsor see their video before they publish it and that again i i wouldn't be interested in doing something like that That's not you know i, I don't i don't want someone to vet something that i've i've done when it's on your channel but again it's your own personal decision you know if you want to do that then absolutely do it you know it's a shame, though, in that it leads to a point where, you know, we had people thinking that we were talking positively yeah, about something I, because that's, we've been that's, bright. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what happens. I think people then just presume, because it goes on quite a lot elsewhere, that that's the situation with you. And, it, you know, it absolutely isn't with us, as we've said several times now. If I tell you I like something, it's because I really like it, because I bought it and I really like it. So and Beehive conversely, Yarns rocks! Yes. Yeah, conversely, if I, t if I say to you that I'm not keen on something, I will have bought that as well. And I think if you are given something and you don't really like it, you might find it really difficult to say you don't really like it. Because I, I would anyway, I'd find it difficult to be sort of critical in any way if I was given something. And it, it just it's just that awkwardness around it. it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, the company shouldn't yeah. be asking. That's the thing. But it's just what started happening a Companies lot, isn't it? Companies should be it? paying to advertise in the old-fashioned ways. Yeah, not it's just it's that's just not what happens these days. It's, it's just things, hey things are different. Yeah. So anyway, almost done, and I will show you that next time. It looks lovely rolled up as well. I've been rolling it up and then popping it in my bag. And when you roll it up, you get like a little. Isn't that lovely? I love looking at that. I was already going to say sausage again then. No, no. It's a little rolled up scarf, isn't it? And then it fits in your bag perfectly because I've been using a bag from Alex Collins, which is lovely, and it fits perfectly. So, Dan Jones, what's on your needles? Well, you had a nearly finished scarf, and granted it's not nearly finished, but... I was going to say, that's not nearly finished, you can't... Remember you're talking to me. Okay. This you've... is the first time anyone has seen this. You've done so well. In fact, actually you have, because you said to me last night, is that rib long enough? And I was like, gosh, that's lovely. And I don't remember, remember seeing him knit it, so oh. I take it all back. So the point being, <laughs> normally I'd have done about half of that. And that's going, true. Look at my hat cast on. That's Haven't true. I done yeah. lots? Yeah. Well, actually, I really have. Mm. The colours are just marvellous. The colours are lovely. The, the colours are more marvellous. Than before, Look. I think. I mean, it's just like the absolute business. This it's is so Feederbrook pretty. Farm yeah. yarns, and they're all machine produced hand spun. Yes. <laughs> Which is just perfect. So it's coming from this one. And like. I think that Ooh. that is, you know, I don't it's mind lovely. how it's produced. It's lovely. If it looks like this, whether yeah, it's been yeah. produced by hand or however it's been produced, this is the type of yarn I really want to knit with. Oh, look at that, a ball band. Well, no, a ticket. When I'm, doing, <laughs> when I'm doing projects like hats it, yeah. and maybe cowls, because I'm just thinking about, I, yeah, I mean, I used a variegate, a seriously variegated in the Sweetheart Cow. Yes. Oh, I did enjoy that project. That was lovely, yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed that project. What yarn was that? I forget now. Uh, well, it, it was a solid, and then it was like a red, and a yeah, and it looked, yeah, oh, yeah, just, yeah. That's what that is cool to that's do. That's what made it because it made it look like a sort Ruins. of a ruin. Yes. Yeah, because the colours came in and out. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. such a fun project. But you know, I think the mistake that I've made historically and what made me get a bit bored with knitting hats was I was just using the wrong yarn mm. and everyone's different aren't they because some someone else might be perfectly cool with a completely plain straight yarn mm. but for me if I'm just going round and round on a basic hat pattern what I really want mm. is I want some variation in what I'm looking at Lovely. and I don't just mean 
in the colours, mm. but also in the plies and the thickness and everything. You're still getting a ladder on your DPN changeover, though. You need to... Yeah, I know. We spoke on our pop show just the other day about how whenever I show, our patron-only show just went out on Sunday. It was our end of Sockerween yes. special. And Sockerween, we will be awarding prizes actually in our endy bits. We will. So if you are a Baker Bear patron and have been taking part in Sockerween, make sure you stick around yes, yes. till the end of the show and prize time, baby. But yes, I made the point then. Someone in our patron-only show we pick out wonderful pictures that we've seen and then we show them on the show and someone had shared a picture with me and there was a mistake on the i think she dropped a stitch yes, yeah, yes. yeah and i made the, the point then that every time i show a project <laughs> here on the video show that it's like prepare for dissection no that's unfair and it wasn't me that noticed the drop stitch someone else had noticed it so don't blame me for that I wasn't blaming you for that. I was blaming you for this. No, all I'm saying is you like to I know. you like to improve, don't you? So I do. I'm only mentioning it. So I know. if you need my help to show you I'm, what to do to avoid that, I need then to I tighten can. up the second stitch. You do. Yes. Yeah. I know exactly what I need to do. Okay, you just can't be bothered. No, I can be bothered. <laughs> so yes, I'm really enjoying knitting with the Feederbrook farmyards. I'd highly recommend it. She's a lovely. You said Feederbrook farmyards. Yarns, sorry. Oh, I thought you said farmyards. Even better. <laughs> it should be Feederbrook farmyard yarns. Oh, yeah, that would be cool to say, wouldn't That's it? That's way too many whys. <laughs> but she's such a lovely person. She was yes. a wonderful person to yes. deal with. And I've got so much of this lovely stuff. And there's even more upstairs. We've got four different skeins. And what is this that I'm knitting? Well, this is a Quantock hat. So I knitted the first one for my mum. Yeah. And we saw her just the other week and it fitted. But Did. not only that, also... She loved it. The wind sheaf by yeah. Stephen West that I knitted, that also fitted. It did. And she happily took both hats. She took both away, yeah. Which is just yeah. marvellous. So I end up, like, thinking that... Because I'm starting to worry that one might be too small. It's like the, 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 the porridge. One's too hot, one's too cold. Yeah. What's that? Three bears. And Gold, who, Goldilocks. Goldilocks. And I couldn't think of the protagonist. <laughs> okay. I forgot about Goldilocks. That's shocking. I really was worried that one was going to be too small and one was going to be too big. Mm. But thankfully, she was really into the sort of snug. The windsheaf was snug. The windsheaf was snug. But it did fit. But it, she, yeah, it fit. And I suppose there's a different occasion for each hat, isn't there, you know? Yeah, I mean, the, the snug it's ones. It's a particularly windy day. You might want something that's snug to your head. The snug ones, definitely, if you really want to sort of keep out the the, the, the cold, mm. I mean, they're, they're perfect, aren't they? But yeah. like you say, if it's a more sort of autumnal day, a little yeah. bit warmer, yeah. Yeah. then the Quantock hat will do fine. Kay Jones, what else is on your needles? Oh, right. So I am knitting another hat. Now, this hat is the one that I was knitting last time that I, I improvised the pattern. And if you remember, I have finished that one, so I'm gonna show you that in what's off my needles. But I love knitting it so much that I wanted to, to start another one straight away. And I think I said at the time, didn't I, that I wanted to do that. So I did. So I called this hat, or I'm calling it just in my head, the tin roof hat, because the first yarn that I knit the hat with was from Pixie Yarn, and it was called Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. So I thought tin roof is perfect because a tin roof keeps a house dry and a hat keeps your head dry. You know, that was my theory. So yeah, I finished that and I absolutely love it. And I wanted to start another, so I have. But can you remember I said at the time when I was showing that hat that I had a feeling that there must be a pattern out there that's a similar sort of thing? And someone let me know. And actually, when I... When they told me about this pattern, I remembered that I'd looked at this years ago. It's been out for quite a few years. It's a free pattern and it's called the Midas hat, like King Midas. And it's a free pattern. So I re when someone reminded me of it, I thought, yeah, I do remember that pattern. But the thing is, unless, like I said before, unless you know the name, I, I, couldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to find it easily. So I thought I'll go and have a look at it. And because it's free... I downloaded the pattern and, and took a look just to compare it to the, the one that I'm knitting. And there are quite a few differences. In the free pattern, so the, 
the hat that I'm referring to, if you didn't watch the last show, I'll be showing you the hat in What's Off My Needles. But it's basically all stocking stitch with a folded brim. In the free pattern, in the Midas pattern, the way that that folded brim is done, you cast on a certain number of stitches and then when you reach the kind of halfway point, you, if I'm remembering correctly, you increase some stitches but then you also work a purl row. So that on the fold, right on the point of where it is on your head, there's a purl row. You don't necessarily see it because it's sitting sort of right, you know, on the point of the brim. And in the pattern, she said that the reason she'd done that, it was an Elizabeth Zimmerman technique and it avoids what can sometimes happen with a folded brim where it flips up or something. Now, I haven't worn mine a lot yet, but I have put it on my head and I, I'm not having any of those issues at the minute, but I'm not to say that that's not going to happen. I think the way I'm knitting it, it's much more straightforward. I think the Midas hat as well started with a provisional cast on, I think. And then you, when you need to join, you know, the cast on edge, when you fold it up, you put those stitches back on a needle and then do it that way. I'm not doing that. I'm doing what I think is, to me, a much simpler way. And I just cast on. I'll show you this hat and then I can explain it a bit more. I went into my stash when I wanted to knit another one. I thought, right, okay, what yarns have I got? And actually, I didn't have that much in terms of... I wanted something that wouldn't... or there was, was no risk of it pooling or swirling too much. I didn't want too much going on, I think. I like... when I'm wearing a hat, I like it to be fairly... neutral is probably the right word. I don't want it to be too bonkers in terms of the the yarn. So I went into my stash and I remembered one skein that I'd got that I've had for ages actually, a few years, and I thought I think that's going to be perfect and it is. And it's a skein from the wool barn from Maya and she doesn't seem to dye yarns like this these days. It's a speckled yarn and her speckles are absolutely beautiful. They're teeny tiny delicate speckles, absolutely gorgeous. But the yarns that I've seen coming out of her shop recent, more recently are very, they're just like tonals, beautiful colours, gorgeous bases, but I haven't seen any that are speckled. But this particular one I've had a few years, so it's the Wool Barn, and the colourway is called Beach Coma, which I suppose is a summery theme. I suppose you could go beach combing in the winter, couldn't you? No reason why not. But the colour actually is very wintry. It looks just like a creamy colour, but there are teeny tiny speckles of like a pale blue and a sort of not quite sandy, more like a beigey sort of brownish colour. It might be difficult to see on screen, but it's lovely. And I'm just a few rounds off being the point where I fold it. So it's quite difficult to show because it sort of curls up until you fold it. But can you see the teeny tiny speckles? Really beautiful. And I, I wish she'd dye up yarn like this. <laughs> I'd be all over it if she was going to do that. But she, like I said, she tends to do the tonals these days. It's lovely. And I think it's just going to be so nice as a winter, a wintry, you know, like just that lovely winter white sort of hat with those teeny tiny speckles. And having those speckles is just making it lovely to knit. So yeah, there's like a blue in there and like a sort of, this sort of colour, it's sort of the colour of the label actually. Really, really pretty. So I'm about, I think four or five rounds off where I fold it and join the cast on up here to the needle. I do that in a certain way, nothing complicated, but I employ a few techniques to make sure that when you do that, you're picking up the right stitch. So I make sure that I use stitch markers to mark the right stitch. I think that's really important because if you start off on the right stitch, then you should you know, go all the way around and end up back where you've picked up all the stitches. And the other hat worked out perfectly fine, so this one should as well. And I, I you know, I really like the finished hat and I'm, I'm looking forward to showing you. I mean, a couple of people, I think, just maybe just presumed I was gonna put this out as a pattern. And at the minute, I've, 
I don't really have any sort of plans for this. I just wanted to knit one. I just wanted to knit one and I couldn't find a pattern, so I just improvised it. I suppose it leads you on to a whole other issue with regards to free patterns because I've come across this thing before where, you know, you might design something and then somebody might tell you that either there's a very similar design out there already or somebody might say there's something like that, but it's free that's out there. So I think then... I kind of feel like, is there an expectation that if I was going to put this out, that it would be free because there's a similar pattern out there that's free. And it gets you into that whole realm of publishing patterns and, you know, where, what warrants something to be a free pattern, I suppose. And I do, I do have some free patterns out there. I think I've got four free patterns and they're very well knitted and people enjoy them. And that's absolutely brilliant. But then on the other side of me, I think, you know, a lot of work goes into a pattern, even free patterns. There's a lot of work goes into them. And I just I just don't know. I get a bit lost in my head we, thinking we, about it and thinking. We've we've analysed this and spoken about this. Yeah, I mean, we have. Before, we have. The conclusion that we came to was there are plenty of paid for and plenty of free yeah. recipes for spaghetti bolognese. Yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that's true. You'll find hundreds online that's true. That's of, true. of um, um, whoever's who's made it that's probably perfect, perfectly delicious. Yeah. But similarly, Jamie Oliver's or perhaps James you, Martin's. You just have a preference, you've don't got to buy you, his book. as one over the other. You go but, with the one that you trust. and is, Yeah. I wouldn't you know, ever hesitate paying for something that I value. No, no, and I would, I would just hate the thought that somebody would think you know, of one of my patterns, oh, that should have been free. Unfortunately, there's um, always going to be people who think that. Yeah, and I I just, you know, it makes me nervous about doing certain things with regards to designing. And I just, yeah, at the, at the minute, I'm just happy knitting this, these, this for me. And if then I decide after the event, you know, because what I want to do is also, because I read that on that free pattern about this type of a a brim flipping up that then made me sort of a bit worried and oh gosh you know is that going to happen with this one so I want to give it some time and I want to wear these hats and I want to see how I get on with them before I made it you know any sort of decision to, as to regards if I was going to write the pattern up but for the time being I'm really enjoying knitting them the other one used just over 50 grams so it's that perfect amount of yarn that if I've knit a shorter pair of socks for example or a pair of mitts I'd have enough left over then to make a hat and I'm certain I'll have enough left over this skein actually I weighed it and it weighed it at 106 grams so it's a nice heavy skein so I'll definitely have enough to make some fingerless mitts as well I think that would make a lovely set for winter so yeah very much enjoying my hat knitting and Ignore the noise and do what you yeah, feel is right. Yeah, I, I do because I because I have an anxious mind and because I suffer quite a lot with <laughs> anxious thoughts. I do have a habit of overthinking. You do have to block out the, the, it the is, noise. It is really difficult. Yeah, and I sometimes have to just not look anywhere and not do anything and not read anything and not you know just to let my brain go back to normal and there'll be lots of people yeah. like that and yeah, that, that's I'm, perfectly fine i'm sure lots of people can relate to to that yeah. so absolutely ignore the noise and do what you feel is right always yeah and, yeah you know whatever you feel is right will always be the right thing and that applies not just to kate it applies to everybody it does you know do good things and do what you feel is right yeah. and then everything's yeah. lovely yeah absolutely it's the second sleeve like your sleeves are lovely oh lovely show the other one aaron harper gansey and look at this second sleeve. Oh, well, it's not the second sleeve. It's the first look sleeve. Look at the first sleeve. Isn't it marvellous? Oh, my goodness. It's perfect length. I knitted it and I checked it on Kay's arm. And thanks to my reasonable knowledge of knitting garments, and specifically ones constructed the way this is constructed, yeah. I know that, fingers crossed, <laughs> that sleeve will be the perfect length Shall for I what you want. Put it on. You can put it on if you want to. I'll pop it on. So you can see it in situ, as they say. And the second one, boom, on in moments, no ladders. Yeah, that is funny. It's got to be the yarn difference, isn't it? You've got also needle size. There's there's a hundred different things. Yeah, and, because this cuff is lovely too. And on that other one, one is bad, two are perfect, yeah. and one is half bad. So it's you know it's like anything. It's like any technique. You know, it's always practice. 
And that's the whole reason why I'm doing those hats, so it's fun. But yeah, look, perfect. There I like sort of bracelet length. I don't like it way down on my sleeves. No. So, I mean, that looks looks pretty perfect, doesn't it? And it's the wonderful, and it really is wonderful. It feels lovely. You know, it, 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 Jameson Smith Shetland Worsted Aaron. Yes. I'm reading out the ticket for you. Ticket. That's the ticket. It is... It's lovely and smooth. It's, interesting it's yarn to work with in quite that. Quite a silky feel to it. It's yeah. woolly but silky. It's really lovely. doesn't have a massive amount of give. No, no. But once, once you get used to it, it's, but the, it's just the fabric lovely. itself it, that it creates is really lovely. Absolutely. You know, really, really enjoying knitting with this and yarn. I love the, I think the cuffs. So pretty, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to be perfect. It's got a kind of 80s vibe. Oh, definitely. What do you think? Definitely. I like that about it. Mm. Vintage. I'm an 80s gal. It's worrying that we can say that the 80s is now vintage. <laughs> I know. But it is, in fact, vintage. It's, no, I don't think Yes, it is. It's just the other day. Isn't no, it, it isn't. It is. I remember it distinctly. Yes, you'd like to think that, but sadly, that's talking, not the fact. Talking of 80s throwbacks, right? For Bryony's birthday, she she really likes perfume. She, she just uses one perfume, but... I, I suddenly had a memory of a perfume I used to wear all the time back in the day. And it's from my kind of nine, 18, 19, 20s. 18, 19. <laughs> and this is a perfume that you always used to smell a lot when you went into Isabella's in Sheffield, if anybody's from Sheffield. And I haven't smelt it for donkey's years, but I always loved it. I couldn't even remember what it smelt like, but I just had a thought that Bryony would like it. So I went looking to see if it's still produced, and it is. And it's Paris by Yves Saint Laurent. And I found it. It's not cheap. I'll, you know, it really isn't. It's, I suppose it's Yves Saint Laurent, isn't it? But I just got the smallest bottle I could find for it, and of course she loves it. And the minute I oh my gosh, I smelt this perfume... And I said to Dan, oh my gosh, I'm like 19 again. Isn't it funny how smells are really, they really take you back, don't they, to yeah, that time? Yeah. It's just amazing. It's, the, your senses are just amazing how it's connected to the brain. Mm. But it's absolutely gorgeous perfume. It's kind of, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you out there will know the smell. And it, it was just amazing. And I just love the fact now that she's wearing a perfume that I wore at her age. And it just sort of connects you, doesn't it? It's just really lovely. So, yeah, love that blast from the past. What else is on your needles? So the last thing on my needles. So you know how I've been saying I've got a million pairs of socks on the go. I thought, right, I'm going to pull out the pair of socks, which is closest to being finished. And I'm going to work on it. And that's what I'm doing. So this pair of socks I haven't touched for quite a few weeks. So it's perfect to get them done. So this pair of socks is the pair, if you remember, where I modified the fairground socks pattern to use it for a solid yarn. And I'm on the second sock, but this was the first one. I don't know if you'll remember these. I love them. I love the I love the colour of the yarn. I think it's gorgeous. And I love the way that the pattern works up. Because it still shows the movement in the stitch pattern because we've added in that pearl ridge. So I'm on the second sock and I've just finished the heel flap. I'm just about to do the turn. So this is the point that I'm at. That colour looks so lovely. I love this yarn. I've gone on about this yarn before, but I do really love it. And it's Malabrigo Ultimate Sock. And this colourway is Ravelry Red. To me, it's a perfect Christmas red. It's lovely to knit. It's nice and round, bouncy. It washes really well. You've got yours on, actually. I knit down a pair of socks using this yarn. And they've been through the washer a few times now, and they're fairing really well, aren't they? Yeah. So all good so far with this yarn. Oh, I've managed to get a knot in it. Do you sometimes get that, where you just mysteriously get sort of knots in your yarn even though you don't know how so yeah i'm just finished the heel flap about to do the turn and then once i've picked up stitches and i'm on the foot i feel like i'm nearly there so fingers crossed these will be done for next time now talking of pattern discussions and things like that when i last spoke about these i did have the intention of releasing them as a pattern however and I've even written it up. However, I've had, I've had sort of second thoughts about it because, mainly because it's a modification of a pattern that's already out there. The fairground socks are 
I mean, they've turned out to be a really popular pattern and that's just brilliant. And what I don't want to do is take anything away from that pattern, first of all. But also, because it's a modification of an existing pattern of mine, I just don't know how comfortable I am putting out another pattern that's, you know... You also don't like churning either. No, I, I do like all my patterns to be something different, yeah. completely different. And again, because this one is related to something that's out there, then... I, I don't know. So I don't know that this one will come out as a pattern. You should put it as a, in a knitability maybe next summer. Well, as... maybe I will. Maybe, you know, it could be again that I'll do something with this with regards to our patrons because it would be a shame to just knit them and then do nothing with it because they're beautiful. I'll be honest, you know, I, I really think that it's a beautiful stitch pattern. It's really lovely to knit. And I think there's enough of a modification from the fairground socks for it to be a pattern independently in its own right. If it's taken effort and skill, then it's worth it. We, yeah, it took quite a lot of figuring out yeah, yeah. to work it out. Yeah. This, you know, may well reappear at some point next year as part of something for our for our patrons. What I've got to always remember is that I've really I enjoyed creating this design. I've really enjoyed knitting the socks and I'll have a beautiful pair of socks at the end of it, which are very festive, aren't they? So these will make a lovely Christmas pair of socks. The yarn, like I said, is so lovely and the whole experience has been really lovely. So that's what matters, isn't it? You know, that we enjoy what we do. So second sock, I'm using double points, as you can see, and these ones are chow goo. And I really like chow goo metal. They are... I did a little sort of review thing recently for Knitability where I compared and contrasted a few different brands of double points and the Chowgu Metal was one of them and I think these were the heaviest out of them all, I seem to remember. When you've been knitting with wooden needles in particular and then you I move over to these, they do definitely feel heavier. They're not like, you know, they're really not that heavy but compared to, to wooden then they definitely do weigh more. But they're lovely. Really like chow goo, metal needles. They're very nice. So yeah, I'm working away on that. And I'm not in any rush really to finish it, but I just want to get these socks off my needles that I've got a few pairs of up there, <laughs> loitering in, in the project bags. So yeah, this is the one that I'm working on at the moment. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to conclude our epic quest. Yes. At the start of this year, we began the My Favourite Blanket journey. We did. We've spent the year walking through the seasons in the woods yeah. and finding inspiration for gorgeous colourways. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to find out what the inspiration is for the final colourway. So without further ado, let's enjoy My Favourite Blanket, the grand finale. creating and knitting blankets, so I decided to design a new one just for us. In this series I'm going to show you how to make your own, from the yarn to the stitches. Join me as we knit through the seasons to create my favourite blanket. Everybody to my favourite blanket and what is the very final episode. Can you believe we've got to this point? We are right at the end of the year now, we're getting towards the end of the year and yet it's the final episode. So we are back here in our little woodland and it's very rainy today, it's cool and you know very sort of squidgy and damp underfoot 
but actually that's really nice and it kind of suits the season that we're now in. So I'm here today to tell you about the last flower inspiration. And this one, oh, I've, I've been waiting for this one all year because it's such an amazing plant and so perfectly seasonal, especially as we approach Christmas. So the plant is the Camellia Yuletide. So the Camellia is a plant that's native actually to China and Japan. And when you find it sort of growing in the wild, it's usually at elevations that are around about 900 meters. So it does like sort of, you know, generally a, a quite high elevation. It's a gorgeous evergreen shrub. It has glossy green leaves and a beautiful, brilliant red flower with a yellow, bright yellow center. It's like a, a daisy sort of formation. Is it called a single flower that, where you've just got a single round of petals? It flowers sort of through Christmas and into early spring. And of course the camellia, if you don't, I mean, I say of course, you might not know this, but the family that camellia comes from actually brings us the tea plant because the, t the plant that is used to produce tea, when I say tea, I mean like black tea, then um, it's a camellia, it's a form of camellia. It's not this one, it's a different camellia. That is where tea comes from. So they take the leaves and they dry them and obviously they end up with the little black tea leaves that we all use to make our lovely cups of tea. So camellia yuletide is what we're going to be dyeing up today. So to do that, of course, we need to get in the into the kitchen and I'll tell you actually, that this dying episode is only possible today because of the genius inspirational thought from our lovely daughter Bryony and that will become apparent and I'll tell you about that when we get in the kitchen. So let's get out of this rain and back into the cosy kitchen and get dying. I use I like stainless steel and I like these ones with the two handles because that's really easy to move around especially when you've got a lot of water in there they're quite heavy we've got our brushes for speckling because we're going to be speckling as usual today and then we're also going to be measuring out some dyes as well so I've just got my old paint brushes which I've used all the way through somebody did ask actually one time I think I answered it but I'll say again um, how I wash these and Honestly, I just run them under a, a hot tap and that just washes them perfectly well. I make sure that, you know, all of the dye, as much as you can, has been kind of tapped off when we've been dyeing. So there's very little actually on there. So I just run them under a hot tap, perfectly fine. We've then got my measuring spoon is one eighth of a teaspoon. So whenever I say half a teaspoon, if I forget to say one eighth, of a teaspoon, then that's what this is. So anytime I say teaspoon when I'm dyeing yarn, it's one eighth of a teaspoon measure. I've got my big mixing spoon, my mask, of course. I've got my gloves, two pairs. I've got my thick pair for when it's hot and I've got my thin pair for when I'm actually just doing the rest of the dyeing. We've got something to protect our work surfaces, so I use this old piece of oil cloth and then some tea towels as well. My dye book, of course, with my recipe in. I've got the dyes now, so we're just using four colours today. We're keeping this really simple because the flower is essentially, I mean, there's a yellow centre to it, but apart from that, it's red and it's green. And that's just perfect, isn't it, for the season? And the way to end this blanket is with red and green, very traditional colours 
for the sort of winter season. So I've gone for two reds and two greens. Let's do the reds first. So the reds, I've got a landscape dye and it's chilli. So imagine the colour of a red chilli, that's what this is. And then I've got Jacquard Fire Red. I mean, is it similar to chilli? They are different sorts of reds. But for me, it's like a fire engine red. You know, like in this, in this country, fire engines are that distinct red colour. It's that kind of a red. It's very, very bright fiery red as the name tells you. We've then got two greens. So these are both landscape dyes and we've got alfalfa. It's a slightly yellow leaning green I would say. Really really pretty shade of green. I use this a lot. And then I've got moss. Moss is as it sounds. Again it's a sort of yellowish green. Now I've gone this way with the greens because I've tried this colour with lots of different types of green. And I've, I've said before that I kind of have a problem with green dyes. I tend to mix my own greens generally because I really struggle with greens. And although the leaf of this plant does probably lean more a blue green, I find that because we're dyeing it in a kind of delicate way, when I've used blue greens, like spruce, for example, is a very blue green. When you dye it in a delicate way, so you don't use much of the dye, it comes out very minty looking. It looks like a mint green. And I've tried that with a few greens that are more blue leaning and they've just ended up looking like mint in the skein and that's not really what I wanted. I did want it to feel more like a proper green. So that's why I've gone more sort of yellow leaning because we're gonna then get, for me, it looks more of a green than when it has blue in it because that then leans towards mint and that can make your eye think it's more of a blue. So I've gone for a more yellowish green it turns out a really, really pretty shade. It's lovely using these two dyes. Just in case you're not using those colours and you want to replicate what I'm doing, you do want a green that's a slightly more yellow leaning green. And then finally, we've got the yarn. Now I've got the same yarn that I always have. So I've got in here, I've got four 50 gram skeins of fingering weight yarn and they're each 200 metres. So if you were using a 100 gram skein, then you want 400 meters to 100 grams. The only difference this time is I had a bit of a nightmare because I ran out of, I realized last week that I'd only got two skeins of my 50 gram yarns left. So I thought, no problem, I'll just go and order some. So I went on to Yarn and Dyed, which is where I get my yarn from. And of course they were out of stock. And I was like having this panic and Bryony was in the background and she said, well, why don't you just take one of your 100 gram skeins and split it? Of course, my sort of panic brain didn't think of that at the time. I'm sure, I'm sure I would have got there, but Bryony helped me out. And that's like, so that's what I did. So I did have, luckily, I had one 100 gram skein left in my stash. So that's what I did. I put it onto the Swift. I wound off 50 grams. I tied up that 50 grams that was on the skein, on the Swift, sorry. And then what I'd wound off, the other 50 grams, I then wound it back onto my Swift and tied it up. So all is saved. We do still have four 50 gram skeins. And I tried to make it so that they were the same circumference, but they did come out just slightly longer, but it'll be fine, no problem. So that's my yarn. And that's been soaking away now for half an hour or so in some citric acid and some warm water. So I didn't mention today the citric acid. Citric acid is what I use as the mordant. So the mordant is the chemical substance that makes the dye permanently stick to the yarn. But this is a food safe product. It's what goes into fizzy sweets. If you've ever had, ever had fizzy sweets, it's citric acid that makes them fizzy. So that's what I use. So there's a scoop of citric acid in here, which is about a tablespoon or so, and the yarn's been soaking in there for about half an hour. So that's everything we're gonna need. So it's time now to get over to the stove and to start dyeing up our yarn. So I've got just a, probably about an inch of water in there, not very much at all, and another scoop of citric acid is in there, and that's heating up nicely. It's just started to simmer. So I'm going to get my yarn in. So I'm going to go over and grab two skeins, 
squidge it out because we don't want to introduce too much more water. Give it a little shake and then in it goes. As we drop it in, we're just going to spread it out to give us as much surface area. No, that's the wrong word. You know, I, I, I want as much yarn on the surface of the water as possible. And the last bits are just tucked down here. And what we're aiming for when we're speckling is we don't want a lot of water pooling on top of the yarn. And I might even, because we're working with reds and I'm always a bit scared of reds because they're just such a powerful colour. I might even just take a little bit of that water out. So I've just got my little plastic jug that I keep for dyeing. I'm just going to scoop out a little bit. That looks better. It's not a lot that I've taken out because there's not a lot of water in there. It just avoids too many puddles on the top there. We don't mind a bit of that. That looks good. I'm going to turn up the heat and just make sure that the yarn is nice and warm yeah that's starting to simmer there so that's fine turn it back down so i'm going to start with the chili so it's the landscapes chili and it looks really intense in the pot and it, it is an intense color so go steady as i've said i'm sure with reds before i tend to go steady initially until you can work out what's happening with it how it looks how it's speckling just go a little bit steady so in we go, and this goes on really quite dark, you can see there, but as the water gets to it, you'll see the red colour coming out. And that's speckling really nicely, it's these landscape dyes are great for speckles. So find another area, a bit more, and we can always come back and put a bit more on. Okay. So let's just go here in the middle, over here, and don't neglect the very top of your yarn there that's over the cable tie. I always remember, I'll try and always remember, to pop a little bit on there. And we can see now how that's speckling. It's really pretty. So I'm going to go back actually and just add a bit more over here because I do want this red to really pop out while, while I'm knitting it. So if you don't think there's quite enough, you know, don't be afraid to go back in and put a bit more. But we are going to put another red on top, so obviously just bear that in mind as well. And when I put the other red on top, you'll be able to see the difference between the two reds. I think that's okay. So the next colour is the fire red. Before I do that, my yarn is now starting to bubble quite a lot, so I'm just going to turn off my heat for a little bit whilst we're speckling because I don't want those bubbles to catch any dye, you know, and, and disperse it in that way. So fire red next. So in we go, and I'm using my brush that's got like the smallest bristles on the end because this is such an intense colour. So back over the area we've been already to intensify that red we've got there but then give it its own little little bit of space as well around the edge. And the, you know the, this is where you see the difference between the jacquard powder and the granular form formation of the landscapes. It's so different. I mean I can see over here where the jacquard has hit it's really, really fine speckles. Whereas the, if you look here where we've only done the landscapes, the speckles are sort of slightly bigger and more defined. Over to the next. So the fire red is a lighter sort of red. So that's why I've put that on top really, because I wanted to get that intense, deep red as the first layer. And some of them, you know, put less than others and, and all of this will add to the sort of variation when we're knitting it up. Okay, that looks good, I think. So that's the red. When I first dyed this, I decided to pick out the yellow centre of the flower and I put gold ochre, I think it was, as my sort of third colour. When you put red with a yellow, the whole thing started to look orange. 
and that's not what I wanted. So I took out the yellow element to this and was sticking with the red and the green because even if the green mixes with the red, you're essentially going to get like a sort of dark brownish colour, which will be fine. It's that yellow because it just goes, you know, I, I just found that there was no avoiding having areas that looked orange and we don't want orange. Okay, so moss is going in now. In the gaps, just find a little gap and it'll go on and it'll look just like a dark colour. Can you see that? But once it starts to disperse a bit, we'll see the green. We've not left too many gaps actually on this layer, but that's okay. Just find some and dot in like that, a little pile of the green. Because when we turn it, we can do a little bit less red and a bit more green, it'll be fine. And again, I'm doing quite little intense, intense pops so that when we find that, when we're knitting, it's just going to be lovely and it'll shine through the background green that we're going to be dyeing up next. A little bit over there and that looks good. So now I'm going to turn my heat back on and then I'm going to put my foil lid on there. So once it starts to simmer, which it is now, I'm going to turn it right down to its lowest setting and then pop on a lid, either an actual lid if you've got that or if not like me, a little foil lid works perfectly. Because we've not got a lot of water in there, we want to make sure the dye sets really well on the surface there. So what's going to happen is it'll produce steam in there and then the steam is going to be hot and that's going to help set the colour that's on top there that we've speckled on. Right, so that's had about 10 minutes now, just simmering away. So we can test it. I'm just going to turn the heat off actually because it is really hot in there now. Um, so we can just test to make sure that that's set. So just find an area and just go in with your big spoon and just give it a little tap like that. And you'll be able to see if the dyes stay put and they are. Now inevitably, because it's red, we're bound to get a little bit left over on the surface, but that's okay. But essentially, that's looking really good. So we can turn it now, and as I lift it, I'll show you the yarn. So you can see on this side where we, we put all the, the dye, it's really lovely and, and saturated with speckles. If we flip it over, not so much. You can see especially down here. So this is what we're going to do now. But what I always like to do is just shift it a little bit on the cable tie and also turn it. So just shift it a little bit and then turn at the same time because that will expose different areas of the yarn. So now we're going to pop that back in, making sure that we get as much of the white, slightly pink, they're looking now areas, but that's fine exposed on the sort of surface again and if you see any bits where you think no I've already dyed that just flip it over and that looks pretty good doesn't it we've got a lot of areas there to go at you can see all this white area here cool so we're going to re essentially repeat what we've just done but I'm not going to go as heavy with the red because we did put a lot of red on that first layer. So I tend to always do this actually. I'll put more on that first layer and then when we turn it, I'm just gonna do a little bit less. But the red and the green together look lovely. So we'll start again with the chili and I'm essentially gonna go more over this end because there was way less over this end. So just choose some areas again where you think it needs some. It does look very festive. The red and the green are lovely. And that moss shade, when you speckle it like that, it is a lovely festive green. Here, not too much over the areas that I've already got quite a bit. That looks good. So then move on to the fire red. And same thing. I'm just going to go over those areas again. But just not so much. I think that's pretty good. So back in with the moss and just find those little areas and just literally like a one, two like that. We just want little intense areas of green in between all the lovely red. I'm gonna go up right up here on the top of it. I think that's good. 
a bit there. Okay, so again, I'm just going to turn the heat up. Now it's bubbling already. So turn it right down, lid on, and then just let that simmer away as we did before for about 10 minutes. And then I'll check it like I did with my big spoon, make sure everything's set, and then pop it outside with the lid on just to cool down. to do our tonal that's going to go with it. Slightly variegated but more like a tonal I would say. I've got my pot here about half full with water and I've got another tablespoon scoop of citric acid in there. So into the pot which is now heating up nicely I'm going to put in some alfalfa. So what we're going to do is we're going to dye it initially with the alfalfa and then we're going to go in with the moss to add some depth and to give it a little bit of sort of variegation. So alfalfa first, and I'm gonna go in with a heaped eighth of a teaspoon. Because it looks like it's a dark color, but actually, once it's in the water, it's, it is quite a gentle color. Oh, doesn't it look lovely in there? I love watching the dyes, all, the, the color sort of all split. It's really pretty. Give it a stir and you can see straight away really there's not a lot of colour in there but there's enough that I'm going to you know get the yarn in there and we'll see what it looks like. It's a really lovely shade this. You do have to give it a good stir because I, I do find there's quite a few different colours with this colour. It sort of breaks into quite a few colours so I like to make sure everything's stirred really well and everything's dissolved. So I tend to sort of give it a stir and then let it sit for a minute. You might not be able to see, but I can see there's still specks of dye there on the bottom of my pan, just swirling around. So I'm just gonna give it another little stir. Okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna get my two skeins now. We're gonna drop it in fairly rapidly. I do want some tones, but I'm gonna drop it in there quite rapidly. Squidge them again. Give them a little shake. In we go, and I'm going to have my spoon at the ready to give me a hand with it. Let's drop it in, check the colour. Yeah, it's nice. So in we go, fairly rapidly, and using your spoon to distribute it around. And then once it's all in, pick it up quickly, move it so that that pale end is dropping into the remainder of the colour. And then in again, and the dye will have gone by the time you've done that, because there's re there really wasn't a lot in there. So now it's time to sort of judge whether we want a bit more of that alfalfa, or whether we like it. So let's have a little look. It really is a pretty green. Can you see the colour there? It's really quite gentle, it is lovely, but I think I just want a smidge more colour in my skeins there. So all I'm going to do, you could take the yarn out and pop it back in your bowl if you wanted to, but generally I'm too lazy to do that and what I do is I lift it up, drop in the colour and then pop it back in. So I've just got about half, half of a teaspoon there. So I'm just gonna lift it up, drop it in and then give it a stir. There's not a lot of colour in there at all. And just decide if I want a little bit touch more actually. Maybe just a smidge. That'll be better. Let's stir to make sure that we've dissolved all of that. And yes, I know I'm still holding this up and your arm might, you know, so your arm might be a bit achy. So if you don't want to do this, just pop it back in your bowl while you do this. That's good. And then drop it back in, same thing. Just giving that end a nice swish as we drop it in. And that's a lovely colour now. There's, there is lots of tones. You can see here it's slightly darker than over here. It's a really pretty shade of green. So it's like a Christmas green, but in a really delicate way. So I'm just now going to take it out of here. So I'm just going to quickly squidge it because it's hot, but I've got my thick gloves on, so I'm okay. Pop it back in the bowl and you can see the lovely shade of green that alfalfa is. And now I'm just going to add some of the moss into the pot. So I'm going to put in 
about, it's sort of like a flat eighth. And you can see when that, that goes in, it's a much deeper shade. It, it does have that sort of look of lichen-y, mossy sort of colour. It looks quite brown actually when it's in the pot. If you think that it's too dark, I am just wondering if I've put too much in there. So what you need what to do, let everything dissolve. And then what I do is I lift it up with my spoon and then judge the colour as you pour it back down. And actually, there's not that much colour as we pour that back down. So I'm happy with that. If I thought there was too much colour, what I would do is I would probably dump out half of this and then put some water in. Or, alternatively, because you know it's not good to send dyes down the drains, just put more water in and that will lessen the colour. But actually it's not too dark at all. So I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm just going to have a little look at it because what I want to do when I put this in is I want to maintain some of this more kind of bright green if you like. So find the section of your yarn which has got the darkest green and put that up at the top and then down here is a bit lighter. So now just squidge it because it will have cooled down enough for you to do that. Now I'm going to drop it in. But I want to keep this sort of mossy colour at one end. You can see as I've dropped it in there, can you see what it does? It's really pretty, but I do want to sort of keep it more to one end of the skein. So as you drop it down, I'm just checking it, just do it a bit slower. And actually the dye is almost gone, look. So now we can go a bit quicker. And we've got a really lovely variegated colour there. And we can get away with doing a variegated at this very end section because we are decreasing all the way. So it's going to vary because the stitch count is changing every row. You know, we're decreasing a stitch. So that's going to stop any or largely, let's hope, stop any pooling that we might get. So we can get away with doing a bit more of a fun variegated. So if I just show you that now, and you see this gorgeous shade down here, it's so pretty and then it fades up here to the softer green. It's lovely. Okay, so that's that. So turn up your heat and let that come up to a nice simmer. And because this, we've just dyed this in the water, you know, there's no speckling going on. As soon as this really comes up to that nice, you know, we've got a nice simmer going on, we can pop it outside to cool down with the others. So there we go. That is our beautiful yarn, our final two yarns all dyed up. It's outside cooling off. So come back in part two. We're going to bring it in, we're going to rinse it off, get it dried and we're going to get to the knitting everybody the final section so I'll see you back soon Camellia Yuletide who's ready for a festive cup of tea yeah would you believe it I didn't know that about Camellia that is tea no well it's, yes not the Yuletide no but yes the uh, tea you know, black, you know, traditional black tea is right. a camellia Where? plant. Yeah. Gosh. And just like, oh, it's so festive. It's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful, that plant? Does anybody have one? I mean, let us know in the comments. I bet if someone you do. does. Yeah, fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful. And just so iconically, yes. like December, isn't yeah. it? The colours. Yeah. Just gorgeous. The perfect, yeah. perfect plant and colourways for us to create just the most it's just wonderful, the end of this blanket. Yes. I can't wait for you to see it, but you've got to knit it first. Got to knit it first. <laughs> and speaking of the you've knitting... You've got to knit it. Yes. <laughs> speaking of the knitting, that's all coming in part two. Yes. Because right now, it's time for us to find out, Kay Jones, what's off your needles? Yes. Now, I do have a couple of things. The first is my Sockerween socks. I <gasps> finished them. <sighs> so... These, and I finished them just a few days before the end of October, so that was brilliant. Perfect. I didn't know whether I would, but I did. 
So here they are. These are my Sockerween socks. So this yarn is from Pixie Yarn. And I've got a good amount, yeah, good amount left. And the colourway is called Halloween Rainbow. And it does this kind of micro stripe thing. If I show you the bottom of the foot, you can see it more clearly here. And I put in a stitch pattern from my Hobbity socks. The Hobbity socks were a design that went into the Christmas edition of Knitability from last December. And the, it, loads of people have knitted this pattern and it's just perfect, I think, for yarns that stripe like this. I, I originally knit this using some moustache yarn in a very hobbit, very hobbity Christmas. I think that's what it was called. And they look fantastic. And it's just where the pearl bumps pick up the colour change. It creates like this whole pattern. It's just amazing. So these are all finished. And I've been keeping a stack of socks, which has been part of our Sock Stash 2023, which has been a year long patron event. And I had quite a few in that stack, but Brian has been raiding it recently because she loves the fairground socks. She's told me that it's her favourite pattern of any that I've made so I had I think two I think three pairs actually of fairground socks in my sock stash which are now in Bryony's sock stash <laughs> so it has been depleted a little bit but that's perfectly fine you know when she came and asked me the other day she said oh did I remember seeing another pair of those socks in a pile somewhere <laughs> I said yes you did would you like them she asked yeah, this is where they are, go and find them. And off she went and found them and put them on her feet. So is there anything better than that, really? No. So these will be going to Bryony, whether I keep them for Christmas or whether I give them to them, I don't know. She's had quite a few pairs recently, so I might keep them. But love them and they're all finished. Amazing. I love the heels. Yeah, the heel is my butterfly heel, which is a mock short row heel. So it's worked as a unit, the sock, and this heel is in three patterns of mine. It's in, originally, it went into the lattice topped socks. And then I've added it into the rumple socks. And it's also in, I can't remember the third one. Well, the first thing that it was in was the knitty you, I think. Yes, I did this originally for the sock bunting. I designed a sock bunting mini sock bunting well that was a platinum collection a platinum from about collection. two years ago yeah a couple of years ago and I wanted a really quick heel that wasn't a heel flap and gusset and I don't really like working short row heels I just don't like the technique so I didn't come up with this I found a technique for this type of heel but then I modified it quite a lot so I put that first of all into the mini sock bunting and then I used it in another patron pattern which was the cozy reading socks which are a thick pair of socks. They're lovely. And then I adapted it to use as fingering weight. So yeah. I've used it quite a lot now, really, in, in designs. And I still love, still love working it. It's a great fit. Really lovely heel. So that's the first thing that's off my needles. And then the second thing is the hat that I've been talking about. So this is my tin roof hat, as I've called it. And this yarn is lovely from Pixie Yarns, but you can see it has done a swirly thing. I mean, whilst I will wear this, I really wanted something that was a bit less swirly, you know, something that didn't do the swirliness and just was more of an overall colour. But I will absolutely wear this. And so, speaking of you wearing it, oh, here you are wearing here it. Here I am wearing it. <laughs> now, fear not, Kay's mouth isn't moving. No. Because I, this is footage we have shot. Yeah, because it would just muck up my hair if I put it on now, so... There you are. You're looking at it on my head. Doesn't it look beautiful? Right now. And I love the fit. The brim is nice and snug because I used a smaller size needle. That's the other thing, actually. With that free pattern I mentioned, the Midas hat, the needle size that that uses is quite a bit bigger than the needle sizes that I've used. So you're going to get a more open fabric, I would Airy. say. Yeah, to mine. But yeah, so this is the folded, folded brim that I spoke about. And if you look on the inside... It's lovely and smooth where it's been picked up. There's no real ridge or anything. 
it's lovely and I just knit it to a length that would give me a little bit of slouch and then I did some rapid decreases which I like on hats that have got a little bit of slouch I think it's quite nice to have isn't it pretty that sort of rapid decrease so I am on the lookout for some more yarn to knit another one that will give me more of a solid colour than this the swirliness that you can see actually on camera isn't as evident in real life. You do find this quite a lot, that cameras pick up differences that we can't actually see with the naked eye as such. So I am on the lookout for a darker colour yarn because I've got the cream one on the go now, which I showed you earlier, but I would like a darker one as well. So maybe I'll have a look on Eden Cottage because they do 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 do. <laughs> they do lots of tonal yarns. I love it, I love the hat, and I'll just see how it goes with regards to that comment about it flipping. Because when you do the technique that's in the Midas hat, what you get is right on the edge here, there's a pearl row. And that creates a natural fold. That, I think, what is what stops it, you know, the fabric doing anything that it shouldn't. So, but I'm just gonna see how I go, because I must admit, I do prefer not having a pearl ridge there. I like just the the look of the stocking stitch. I think it looks more kind of shop bought. Not that I want it to look particularly shop bought, but um, yeah, we'll see. So I'll let you know how that goes. And I'll obviously show you the other one when that's finished as well. And once I've been wearing it for a bit, I can report back on, on how it's been. Cool, so, yeah. right, this is it. My goodness, lost for words, because the epic journey is about to come to an end. Yes, we're going to see the finished yarn, and then we're going to knit it into the blanket, and we're going to find out how to finish off our gorgeous My Favourite yes. Blanket. Let's get back and finish off Kay's epic quest. <laughs> finale aren't we so so exciting so we got that lovely yarn all dyed up I got it dried I rinsed it I brought it in I rinsed it then we dried it and I've got the yarn all here now ready to knit into the final section and oh my goodness I'm so pleased with this it looks beautiful it's exactly what I wanted it's that red and the green it's just so lovely. And of course, you get an overall pinkish hue to the background colour, which is really fairly inevitable when you use red. Some areas are still quite white, but then you do get that pinkish look, which is absolutely lovely. I've not got a problem with that because actually the flower for the camellia, it is more of a crimson and crimson can sometimes look slightly pinkish, can't it? And the green, I absolutely love the tones in this. This shade of green that we created when we over dyed it with the moss, I absolutely love it. And I'm tempted just to dye a skein of yarn fully in that colour. But the two together are just absolutely what I wanted to finish this blanket. It's got that kind of Christmassy feel to it, but without being overly in your face Christmas. You know, you would look at these and not necessarily think of Christmas. You would just think lovely sort of reds and greens and maybe a bit wintry, maybe a bit autumnal. I've got my two here that I'm going to wind up. So I'm going to get those all wound first of all and then we can get to the knitting. What I'm going to tell you actually is this is the final section so we're going to finish, we're going to finish the blanket everybody, can you believe it? We're going to finish the blanket. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off showing you how to, to get going on the section but then at the very end, the very tip of the blanket uh, what I've done is I've done a little swatch just so that I can show you now what to do at the very end because I tried lots of different things to make both the cast on corner and the bind off corner look as close as possible to each other and I, I'll explain that a bit more when we're kind of looking at the little swatch that I've done and showing you exactly how to finish off that final corner. 
So before we get to that, of course I need to wind the yarn for the final time. Please ball winder, be kind to me for these last two skeins. skeins here. Let's pop it over the swift and snip all the ties. This skein looks a bit kind of loose and messy so let's just hope it's not going to cause us too much of a problem. So here we go then, let's get rid of all these. Right that's two and I've got two more right together there, they're really close to each other. They can just sometimes move in the dyeing process. Right, let's find the end. There we go, cut off the end bit. Now I'm going with the continued theory that when I pull my yarn from the right hand side of my Swift, all is well. Let's see if that holds true today. Fingers crossed. I'm going to kind of help it a little bit just by holding it, just to just in case it because sometimes if it can tangle on the on the swift, then um, it can make it suddenly sort of stop. So just by holding it and helping it a little bit, I should alleviate that. There we go. Oh, that went really well. Let's take that off. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to tuck the end there that's coming from the centre just right into the centre because sometimes if you end from the centre is sort of coming out, as you're pulling, or certainly this happens to me, as I'm pulling from the outside, it can get tangled on here. So I've just pushed that inside. But that's lovely. Oh, and it's really pretty really pretty green with those variegations that we put in there. So I'm going to get the other one all wound up and then we can get to the knitting. Okay, so I'm all set up now. I've got my two skeins all lovely and wound and they went perfectly. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yarn winding gods. So I've got this well, I've got myself set up as best I can with this huge volume of blanket here on the desk. I'm already boiling because I'm just of that age where I'm always hot. The first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change my cable length because at the moment I'm still on my really long cable. You can see I've got all of this cable unnecessary length going on here and it just makes for me having a longer cable than you actually need just makes it even more sort of a bit fussy and takes me a bit longer to knit a row so I'm just going to change back down and you know and, and you can change back down at any point I haven't done it so far I've just kept going with this really long cable and you can of course just carry on knitting but I'm going to change back to my 80 centimeter length so I've got the cable here I've used higher, higher bamboos the whole way through this. They're interchangeables. I absolutely love these needles. I've gone on and on about these needles before, but I really do love them. They're, you know, they're smooth without being um, too, they're, they're not overly slick. I mean, as bamboo needles go, they are nice and, and smooth because some of them are super grippy, aren't they? But I always find with wooden needles, as you knit more and more with them, they get better and better because they polish and that just makes them so lovely and smooth to knit with. So I'm just going to change the cable length as we knit. So all I do to do that is, you know, we've got all of this cable length here and ideally I would put stoppers on this end when I take off this needle tip. I don't have any higher, higher stoppers. I know they're like cute little pandas, I think. Well, I think they are, but I haven't got any. But it doesn't matter because we've got such a long cable that our stitches are not gonna go off the end. So all I'm going to do is, if I can open, yes I can, 
and get out my 80 centimetre cable and I'm just going to take off the needle tip from the opposite end to where I'm going to be knitting and attach it to my shorter length of cable. Now I do have those little higher higher rubber grips, I've got a couple of sets but I find with those over time the rubber kind of goes hard and shiny and it may it loses its grip and historically what I've done with those is I've got a bit of sandpaper and just sanded them and that sort of puts a bit of grip back into them but the other thing I've been doing lately is just to use one of my rubber gloves because it works perfectly so I put a rubber glove on the hand that's going to hold the needle and my other hand you know because you need grip here I find so just grip onto it and then twist Where's my, there it is, twist and it comes off. Works perfectly. So I now just keep these rubber gloves, if I've got like a large project where I'm gonna be doing that, I just keep one in my knitting bag and then it's always there if you need to retighten. Because you don't have to put it on your hand. You can, it doesn't have to be this type of a glove. It can be any rubber glove. It can be your marigolds from the kitchen. It's totally fine. You can just sort of hold on to the glove itself and just use it like that, like the rubber rubber grips. And obviously these cost nothing compared to those little rubber grips. So I've got my needle tip, so I'm just going to put it on the shorter length of cable and then get my glove back and just hold on to it with sort of both hands like that and give it a nice twist. Just use it as you would the little rubber grips. There we go, nice and tight. So now I'm using this effectively like a straight needle really. So I'm just going to start knitting with this end and you know you do have to be aware, like I said ideally I would have put stoppers on both ends here but I don't have them but it's totally fine because we've not got that many stitches now and we're just going to make sure they don't go off the end of this needle. So I'm just going to start knitting with this end and keep that cable out of the way. So let's bring in our yarns, held double obviously as we've been doing the whole way through and also as we've been doing the whole way through I'm going to knit the first four stitches using the old yarn There we go, and now I'm going to bring in a new one, leaving a tail for weaving in, just loop it over and start knitting. Make sure you're working with the right end of yarn. So this section is going to be worked exactly the way that we've been working the other decrease section. So we're going to knit to the last two stitches and then do that lift over decrease. And we're going to do that on every row and you're going to work that until you've got three stitches left. Now that will effectively finish you on like a wrong side row. There's not really that much difference between the wrong side and the right side. It, you just see those little pearl bump, you know what I mean, where the colour goes into the pearl bumps on the changeovers. So if you're keeping track of your right and your wrong side, which I do with a progress keeper, you will end on a wrong side row and that's as it should be. So I'm going to knit across and what I'll do actually is I will work to the end of this row I'll do the lift over decrease one last time and then I will show you how I just put the other needle tip back on this cable that we've added on. So I'm going to work now across this row, it won't take me long because we've currently got 116 stitches, that's where we finished, so it won't take me long just to whiz across to the last two stitches. So I am almost to the last two now, there we go. So the lift over decreased one last time. So I've worked to the last two stitches. I'm going to grab that last stitch with my right hand needle, put my finger on the end of the other stitch there and just lift it over. And then that last stitch we knit through the back loop. 
So now, you, you if you've done what I've done, you will find that you've not got a needle tip on the other end and here it is in your hand. So I'm going to grab my glove and I'm going to take off this needle tip and that cable, the long cable, can now go away and then get your other end of your cable and just pop it on. And you've changed over without having to like slip your stitches and we've done a row whilst we've been changing over so that's good. So just tighten that again. So you've just got a nice short cable to finish off your blanket. So now I'm going to carry on knitting. Every row is knit to the last two stitches and then do that lift over decrease until you've got three stitches left, okay? So what I'm going to do now is bring in my little swatch that I've done just so I can show you what you do when you have got to those last three stitches. Okay, so here's a tiny little swatch. This is what the tip of your blanket will end up looking like and I've just got three stitches left here on my needle. I've actually already cut my yarn there, I don't know why, who knows, but that's fine, I've got enough there to work with. So what we're going to do on the last row is we're just going to bind off. So we're just going to use a standard knitted bind off on these last three stitches. So that means we are going to knit that stitch knit the next stitch oops, and then just pass one over the other. Same again with the very last stitch and that's going to leave you with one stitch on your needle. Now all I'm going to do now is pull out my needle so you can just pull it so you've got a loop and then pull it all the way through Okay, and that leaves you with a bit of a sort of funny looking end here. Can you see you always end up with like a longer sort of stitch just here, but we're gonna fix that. Because now after you've, you know, cut your, cut your yarn, pop it onto a tapestry needle, and then where you see this long stitch here coming out of this pearl bump below, I'm just going to pop my tapestry needle through there and then give it a little pull and can you see that sort of tidies up but you can't see that long stitch now and then I would just weave in I'll just turn it the other way round to weave my yarn tail in so I won't weave it in properly I'll just thread it through a couple of stitches just so that you can then see what it looks like at the tip and what I wanted from this if you see now I'll get the the blanket the sort of cast on point and what I wanted is I wanted them to look the same and I found if I decrease down to two stitches and then either you know just bound those off or the other thing I tried was just cinching them, just cutting the yarn and then running the tapestry needle through the last two stitches and then pulling, it produced a really pointy end. And where we've cast on, if I show you here, look, you can see it is pointy, but it's not super, super sharp. So if I show you now the two ends, you can see they're really, really similar, aren't they? And I, I know it's a little tiny detail, isn't it? It's a little tiny, teeny, tiny detail. But for me, we've gone to all the trouble of producing a lovely, neat and tidy blanket with beautiful edges. And I don't want to just finish it off quickly and have it not quite matching. And this, for me, just produces a really, really similar cast on and bind off. is everything now you need to know to finish off your own My Favourite Blanket. Can you believe we've got to the end of it? I can't. I mean, it, it, although it feels like it's taken a long time because we've been doing this for, gosh, a good number of months now. But then on the other hand, it feels like yesterday that I was just casting on with you all. 
And it's been so fantastic to see so many beautiful blankets emerging all through this year and so many finished ones because I know a number of you have finished some blankets already so that's just been brilliant. So thank you all so much for watching this series. I hope you've really enjoyed watching me dye the yarn, dyeing up your own yarn if you've done that or just getting yarn from your stash and knitting along with me. It's been an absolute joy to see all of your blankets. So thank you all for joining me for my favourite blanket and I will see you next year for something brand new and very exciting. series and what a blanket all finished off all finished and here it is so here it is all folded up and i've folded it so that i can show you that last color it's sort of slightly darker in tone which i think is lovely but it's got tons of those red yeah. speckles in it which is what i wanted i wanted it to be heavily red speckled for the flower and then you've got that kind of tonal green which goes more into sort of a, a mossier, deeper green. It's not too bright, which I think is lovely. So look, and there's the corner. Can you see them? Oh, it's flopped over. It's two little pyramids, isn't it? Ah, it's difficult to show. But, you know, I took time and I swatched for quite a long time. I know it sounds silly. It's only the very corner of a blanket. But I did swatch for quite a long time to make sure that it didn't come out too pointy. So it took me a little bit to work out the best way of doing that. And I think I've, you know, it looks, to me, it looks really, really similar. You know, the cast on and the, the cast off, if you like. So I'm pleased with that. And yeah, it's all finished and it's, you know, it is a, it looks so lovely folded up and, you know, this is the whole thing now. Isn't it just like so satisfying to have the whole blanket and, you know, that, that centre section, I think, is very summery. You know, the colours do run through. You can see this bit here is sort of summery, bright and fun. That just reflects and the 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 seasons that we've, of... that we've run through, yes, yes. yeah. I think because as well I, I maintained the same dyeing technique the whole way through, yeah. that's given it a lovely consistency. Uniform, yeah, cool. so this is where we started off up here. So this is spring. I think they are quite spring-like, aren't they? And then we got into the hotter colours in summer and then moved through to the last section, which I think might be my favourite, that's very autumnal. Yeah. You can see this one here does also use greens and sort of a pinky colour, but the end one is very much more... It's darker, isn't it, than this one here. So yeah, it's, it's all finished. I can't quite believe it. And it's a really nice size. It's very much, I did put the, the dimensions are in the pattern that our patrons have been getting the whole way through. Yes, that's probably just worth mentioning that obviously final instalment, the yeah. final instalment of the pattern is available. If you follow the link in the show notes below, you can be taken straight to that and it's accessible for all Bakery Bear patrons. So yes. from, you could access it for as little as $2. Yeah. But exciting news mm. because Kay is going to produce a special version of the pattern with lots of lovely pictures and yeah. links to all the episodes yeah. and everything and it's going to be marvellous and this is going to be available in January just for Baker Bear patrons yeah just for the month of January yes and then it's going to be gone yeah because you know we've you obviously can knit this just from watching the videos and lots of people have been doing that but we just thought it might be nice to round everything off and fun and, and fun yes so just like dan says for the month of january this pattern 
uh, will be accessible. The you know the full pattern, like Dan said, with it's a special version. That photos Kay's doing. in it, and you know everything you need to know. We'll to give make you it. all the details on how you can access yeah. that special edition of my favourite blanket once the Baker Bears Advent calendar is yes. over. Yes. So, so it's something to look December. forward to in yes. January. Yes. I think that's what we wanted because January can be like a really the can't it? Gray, so I thought we cold. thought that this would give people something to look forward to. So if you haven't been knitting along a lot, I know a lot of people maybe didn't have the time. Then in January you might want to start one. I don't know about you, but even if I had been knitting along, if I knew that there was an explicit, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a special exclusive edition, I'd want to get my mitts on it. Yes. Yes. So that will be there in January, and we'll talk a bit more about that after. Yes. You know. So all done. But it's My like, goodness. Oh, I love blankets all folded up. Yes. And right now... It's so lovely. It's time for the Endy Bits. Endy Bits. And the first thing on the agenda of the Endy Bits is the latest issue of Knitability is out now. Yes. And this is the issue which includes Kay's needle comparison review yep. thingy that she yep. referenced earlier on yep. in the show. I also talk about my love of Jane Austen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it's marvellous. Yes. And all the other usual wonderful, so we've got designer interviews and maker interviews and also articles from our wonderful patrons. And it's all available right now. And it's very special. Halloweeny looking, yes. isn't it? It's beautiful. Yes. Jen did an amazing wonderful job. Wonderful job by our editor, yeah. Yeah. Jen de Maria Keeler. Also, as well, the radio show will be back next week with a show all about English stately homes. Oh, oh yes, that's going to be fun. Yes. And I think we have some prizes. We do. Oh, my goodness. So I've got the Soccer Ween prizes to give out. Da, da, da. So if you're a patron and you took part in our Socky Ween. Oh, so so Socky Ween. Socky Ween. Oh, I feel like <laughs> I need to change it to Socky Ween. Oh, yes. Um, event, then stick around because I've got the prizes. So we had a Ravelry thread open and that's where most of the entries have gone but then for for people who don't use Ravelry then we did have some emailed entries as well and have added those in so all together we had getting on for 350 entries which is brilliant yeah. so I've used random number to generate the four winners so I've got two yarn prizes and two pattern prizes to give out so we'll start with the yarn prizes, because that's the one on the top of my list. So the first yarny prize is one of the Malabrigo skeins. You know, I was just going on about it, about how much I love it. And it's the Malabrigo Ultimate Sock in a lovely Halloween-y colourway called... That word. Sirs? I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's that word. And it's gorgeous purple, like, speckle explosion. Purple and blue. So this prize was won by number 163, and that is Jamie in Chicago. Jamie is Hayes Mom 25 on Ravelry, and Jamie is the lovely lady who is the singer for our theme tune at the end. Jamie composed that, well, not composed it, Jamie wrote the lyrics yes, for the piece of music. Yes, performed it. And she performed it. So Jamie is the person that sings at the end of every single one of our shows. She does. So Jamie... It's, we're like a duo, because Jamie's singing it and I'm playing the bass. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. But it's not yeah. just bass, there's piano as well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that would be a bit weird. A, a voice and bass. I know. <laughs> anyway. And she's a beautiful singer. As yes. You know, you will have heard loads and loads of times. Yeah. So, Jamie, that's yours. So, Jamie and the next person who's won a yarn prize, if you can just pop us an email just with your postal details and then I can get it out to you. So, that's the first prize. The second prize is another yarn prize. And this one was won by number 15, 1515. And, well, I didn't... I know no, no, it no, sounds a bit like 50, doesn't Please it? Do now, what? of course, confusion. It's 15, no, 1, do. 5, do all 15. numbers just right from now? It's a quarterback number. House! Or, used to be a quarterback number. Don't Bingo. even start me. No. Don't even start me yes, about yes. the changing of numbers yes, you're, for American football players. You're on the Tom Brady side of things. Because I'd be getting on my soapbox. Yes, yes, right, anyway. Yes. Right, so that person is uh, Keely, and Keely's in the UK. So that's brilliant. And she is Red Keely. Red Key, Key, Keely. 
do you know um, red kali Ooh. Ooh, Ooh, now, dip some things in that delicious now, oh i used to love kali <laughs> did anybody else used to dip it in their finger and then yes, you'd end yes. up with your finger would a be like finger. stained yes, red yes. for like a week afterwards yes. because you've been using it to dip i preferred dip the, in your kali i like the the, <laughs> the, the the lollipops they were like strawberry flavored yeah they were oh. Oh, they were amazing. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Dipping a lollipop in was better. Like, but then you oh. ran out of K- you ran out of lolly before you'd run out of K-Line. Oh, I didn't because I used to use the lolly as a spoon. <laughs> spoon it in, scoop it up. If you don't know what we're talking about, K-Line is like sherbet. Yes. Um, and it was like a delicious. flat. Delicious. It was, it was a flat lolly that it would, it would yes. come with. So you could, so you could so scoop get it, in, it up. Scoop that is right, you oh, could scoop it up. Against that. Yeah, I yeah, always yeah. ended up with lolly. I'd finish it. You had lolly left. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which I finished. I was perfectly happy to finish. <laughs> delicious sugar overload moment yes, there. Yes. So, Keely, you have won the Regia, Regia Merino Yak, which Beautiful. is another one of our absolute favourites. Absolutely is. So, Jamie and Keely, send me an email with your postal details and I'll get those out to you straight away. So, we then had two pattern prizes, two of my patterns. The first of those patterns is a pair of socks called Winter Solstice beautiful lace pair of socks and that pattern has been won by number 313 and that's Ellen in Ontario and Ellen is bookworm 33329 on Ravelry so Ellen I will just send that pattern through to you on Ravelry I will gift it through to you and then the, the, the fourth prize and the second of my pattern prizes is the burrow blanket. Now, the burrow blanket is a pattern that I put out quite a few years ago. A lovely garter stitch blanket with a gorgeous edge down it. Really, really pretty. So that pattern has been won by number 97. And that's Jen in Washington. And Jen is Nitty Fiend on Ravelry. So again, I will send that through to you on Ravelry, Jen. And I think what's so lovely about those two patent prizes is it was so lovely you going through and picking two of your favourite designs that you've done from over the yeah, years. I mean, so it's I... like it's like when you're in a, a wine club and the expert ah. picks you a couple of their oh, favourite yes. wines. Yes. Here you go. Yes. <laughs> Not that I drink wine, although I, I sometimes have a small glass. But sometimes it's very, very I have a rare. little bit, very rare. I have a bit now and again, but again, not not so much these no. days. And I can't stand red wine. <laughs> Random fact so, about me. What an exciting collection of yes. prizes! But I particularly enjoyed your pattern selections because it's always lo- well. I just think it's. I, I think it's so lovely when you hear someone talk about their favourite things. Yeah. It's yeah. like when you hear a musician. I always sort of think of that, and you know, I think of some of my favourite musicians. My favourite part of interviews is when they say to them, "What's your favourite song that you?" Yeah, out? yeah. I've I've been watching a YouTube channel the past couple of weeks that I discovered that I've just absolutely fallen in love with, and she's called Miranda Mills. I'm sure a lot of people watch her. She's a, a bibliophile. Is that the right? somebody who loves books so her her primary sort of thing that she does is books but then she'll also do baking she'll also go on trips out and she actually lives not too far from us I don't know exactly where but from what she said it can't be very far away and I just love her videos and quite often she will do videos which are like my favorite things from this year or whatever and it's lots of different random things so yeah i agree that yeah. it's brilliant to it's watch cool. things like that it's cool love it yeah so folks oh my goodness that's the end of another video show yes when we see you in two weeks it is the start of our seasonal programming oh my goodness oh my goodness yes it's that's going to be terrifying. immense more than terrifying. terrifying terrifying more than terrifying new word in a brand new festive set with brand new seasonal outfits. New clothes. Yes. Knit or Forfeit is back for a two episode run. Yes. We will be finding out who will win this year. Last year, Kay was victorious. Who will win the crown? We'll find out over the next two episodes. And then in our final episode of the year, yeah. for a very special I'm so excited about this because we're approaching this in a very different way to yes. what we ever have done before. Yes. It's going to be like, oh, can't wait Kay's handmade Christmas yes, returns it does oh yes yeah. and there's going to be sewing and there's going to be stuffing of things and there's going to be oh that sounded like a chicken there's going to be oh there is going to be stuffing of things craft, maybe. there's going to be crafting and there's yeah. going to be cooking yes. it's going Let's to be amazing simplify it oh my goodness crafting and cooking <laughs> yes <laughs> stuffing and sewing <laughs> crafting and cooking 
<laughs> Mine sounds nicer yes, than does. yours. Look, say. before I have a hernia, <laughs> I think we should say... We've lost the ability to speak sensibly Thank now. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in two weeks <laughs> see with you more. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Who's it sitting and knitting? Standing cable, take a Enthusiasm's not quitting. Standing cable, take a They'll take you to fabulous places of which they're famous. in a castle watching the bakery repairs. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery repairs. What's on your shelf or what's in your oven or maybe a show you'll want to wear. So sit yourself right down